so we're just gonna go off the camera. Oh, like that sounded like yeah. it's the slides are going to be online anyway, so yeah. Um, so the camera. to continue on, to continue on with like the, the whole uh, talk, uh, three parts, and as last part, I'm just going to uh, discuss a couple of tools which could be existing on the OS level, um, basically within uh, Linux. Um, Mod PageSpeed uh, from Google it offers a lot of uh, good opportunities, and a tool, for instance, like uh, Maldit, uh, which is detecting malware. Uh, so it's like a virus scanner, but then optimized for Joomla websites being infected with rootkits and etc. Um, yeah. It's remote. Cool. So what are the requirements basically? Um, well, this talk is about uh, doing tricks on the Linux operating system level. I'm saying Linux. It could be basically any Unix uh, form, uh, but for sure um, these tricks on a Windows Server is going to be problematic. So I'm basically skipping the whole uh, Windows story. Uh, Mac OS Server could be used, but actually I'm just focusing on, uh, on uh, Linux. And that means basically that SSH uh, access has to be available. And actually logging in as root is, is probably also a must because you have to transfer some binaries to, the, to uh, certain directories. So basically um, we own the server, whether it's a physical server or VPS. Uh, but we do the hosting, hosting environment. So the whole story is, uh, is a bit off if you're dealing with a shared hosting environment. But well, a VPS nowadays could be the same, uh, same price as a shared hosting. So, um, Any questions so far about the sound or the video? <laughs> okay, uh, part one, dealing with images. There are a couple of tricks, a couple of tools which are commonly used. OptiPNG, and we're going to discuss uh, the WebE uh, format. Uh, so first of all, if we talk about optimizing images, the, the main uh, gain to have is actually to make the images smaller. Well, uh, making them smaller means uh, looking at the bit depth, looking at the color palette, indexing them. And basically, this can all be done from uh, Photoshop or well, whatever you use to GIMP. Um, it also means like um, less quality, the resolution could be brought down, or various uh, compression techniques could be uh, implemented. Um, and if we do that, we could do that on um, our own local environment, the uh, uh, local development environment. So for instance, if we create the images in the game in Photoshop, we could apply these tricks directly. But what if you're using a lot of images which are not developed by yourself? For instance, if you're using a Rocket Team template, if you're using a View Theme template, you're stuck basically with all these images. And actually it gets very boring if you have to go through all these images individually and um, compress them one by one. So it's much better to use tools which could be used in, for instance, a basic shell script. Uh, of course, it means like you know you're you're familiar with shell scripting in the first. But if you are, if you are capable of running down a directory a directory in a recursive way, so also all the subdirectories, you could just pick up any PNG uh, out there and run opti PNG um, uh, through it um, or PNG cross PNG out, and they do all these different kinds of compression techniques. So basically, optimizing one PNG with OptiPNG is optimizing the baby for like um, 95%. But to get the other 5%, it's also wise to use PNG crush and PNG out. So all these tricks of all these tools are applied on the same image. The bad thing is also taking some time to apply all the correct filters. Um, these command line uh, tools, they offer all these parameters. Um, so using them very effectively also means you have to get used to these parameters. You have to understand what it's actually doing and make a study out of it. And that also means that um, with OptiPNG you could use a compression technique which is very good, which could, well, uh, downsize the image from 100% to perhaps 50%. But it takes a couple of minutes to be applied. So one PNG image, image could be optimized, could be totally um, compressed using various techniques, but it takes a couple of, uh, couple of minutes to, to do so. So if you do that for one folder with 1,000 images, you also know you're basically optimizing things for a couple of hours. <coughs> so doing that through a web interface makes no sense. Doing that from a shell 
um, makes much more sense. Uh, who's familiar with these uh, tools? Have you used them? <laughs> okay. Um, OptiPNG is basically one of the best. Uh, PNG Crush is almost copying the behavior of um, uh, OptiPNG. And for some compression techniques, actually, OptiPNG is a little bit faster than PNG Crush. Um, so basically, I always use OptiPNG, get up to 95% of the optimization, well, forget about the rest. Um, there's also some uh, JBEG um, optimizations possible, JBEG Optim and JBEG Tram. Uh, these are individual tools. Um, but I believe JPEG Optim is also uh, shipped with a package called Image Magic. And Image Magic is this command line tool set of all these different tools to convert also one size of images, like the, the resolution 400 by 200 pixels to another pixel size. So all these different tools are, are shipped with this package called Image Magic, and you could, you could just install that uh, um, as well. Um, Basically, the, 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 the main reason to show you these tools is um, there are a lot of different um, uh, compression techniques being available to, to downsize the, the image size of PNG images, JPEG images. And not all of these techniques are included with uh, a tool like the GIMP or a tool like Photoshop. And if you use these tools, you have like almost all the image, uh, image compression techniques available. Now it's funny that a lot of different vendors also start using their uh, own compression techniques. And uh, in some cases uh, you get an online result which is much better than using these tools. For instance, the website called Smashit. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Smashit. Smashit.com. Um, basically what you do is you, you take your images, um, wrap it up in a zip file, upload it, and after some waiting you can download the zip file again and then suddenly everything is uh, compressed. Um, for JPEG, these tools are basically better optimizing, or um, these tools are offering a better result. But sometimes with PNG optimi uh, optimization, uh, using this Smashit website is giving, giving a better result than uh, using these tools. So if you have only one site to optimize, it might just as well be uh, that you were, you're just uploading these images to Smashit waiting for the result, downloading it to your own computer, then uploading it again to the web server. But if you have like uh, a couple of hundreds uh, of uh, sites you want to convert automatically, then uh, using these uh, automated tools um, for, for creating a shell, shell script to automate this is, uh, is a, little bit, a little bit better. Um, and then there is WebE. Um, WebE is developed by Google. And it claims to have, um, well, it's, it's reducing the image size somewhere between 25% and 34%. Um, so what is WebE? Well, WebE is a new image format. That means we already have JPEG, we already have PNG, we already have GIF. But now we have WebE as well. And uh, Google is claiming that WebE is just, well, um, in some cases, only 60% of the original PNG. So you can convert a PNG image, you can convert a JPEG image into this new format, WebE, and then suddenly the file is just a lot smaller. So that's good. But can you use it? That's the next question. So that's, uh, this is this, this um, experimental thing of Google trying to um, introduce this new image format, but well, it, it's, it's no, uh, no wonder that actually Photoshop is not supporting it yet. So Photoshop offers you an ability to export an image to JPEG, PNG, GIF, but not to WebP. Um, Google is offering these tools to convert, and C WebP is actually the name of the binary you can install on the Linux operating system level. Um, and then from the command line you can convert a PNG or you can convert a JPEG uh, to this new uh, format. Um, so you have the tools, you can install the tools on your own web server, so that's cool. Um, but there are a couple of downsides as well, and that is, first of all, uh, the browser has to understand web images um, before you can actually render an image. So if you're uh, looking at a web page, and the web page has a lot of different images, the browser has to understand these image formats 
to actually display them. And while well, Internet Explorer for sure doesn't understand this. Uh, there's actually one browser only using this, and that's Google Chrome. So a lot of people get disappointed with, with that, but well, my own Yurio site has about 40% uh, uh, of all the visitors are using Chrome. And if of all these visitors, 40% is using uh, a new image format, which is saving me a lot of bandwidth, is probably saving me in total perhaps like 20% of my bandwidth. And that's a lot. So actually, Google Chrome is only supporting Wacky. There's also a Firefox uh, plugin available, but you have to be a developer to install this plugin. But the end result is that uh, at least some part of your visitors are using this new uh, image format. Um, so that's still cool. <coughs> some part of your visitors are still able to use WebP as soon as you implement it. Um, another problem is actually transparency. Um, WebP is this, this new format and it basically means like there's this, this uh, Google working group working on replicating all the PNG features, all the JPEG features and transferring it into WebP. Uh, and then to, not just copying the code but trying to optimize it every, every time they can. So they've done, they've done already a good job if you're dealing with JPEG images. They've done already a good job if you're dealing with PNG images without transparency. But as soon as you have PNG images with transparency, it sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. So that actually means again, like, well, of all the browsers, you can only use Google Chrome. And of all the images, you cannot use GIF and you cannot use PNG with transparency. Um, if you use those images, they have to remain the old format. They have to remain um, GIF images or PNG images. So that also offers uh, a problem when you're trying to implement WebP automatically. So let's say you're a web designer and you're building this fancy template with a lot of different images. Um, then you want to have some kind of uh, way to detect whether uh, the browser is WebP capable or not. Uh, in other words, um, you create this website and um, all your images are JPEG images and PNG images plus all their WebP e equivalents. So you have a lot of images and you need some kind of browser detection to detect is the browser capable of understanding WebP? If so, we're going to use the WebP format. If not, we're going to use the original format. Uh, well, that's why I developed two extensions. One for Joomla, one for uh, Magento, both of them uh, free. And basically, the WebP for Joomla um, extension is a plugin, a Joomla plugin, a system plugin, which is translating the HTML depending on uh, what's happening actually in the browser. Uh, it's JavaScript based, and what's actually happening is the whole <coughs> HTML page is being parsed. So at the end, just before the HTML is being sent to the browser, um, the HTML page is being parsed by this system plugin. The system plugin tries to detect all the images, and every time when it finds the JPEG images, the image, it tries to use this CWebP binary, create a WebP image um, which is matching the, the JPEG, and adding uh, the, the JPEG image and the, C, uh, and the, the, and the WebP image to this to this JavaScript list, and this JavaScript list ends up in the bottom <coughs> of the page and is only being used if you're using Google Chrome. So it's a clean solution. Uh, even working with uh, page caching, uh, even using uh, uh, if you use all these different kinds of uh, caching techniques, it's always working, uh, but only for a limited set of uh, browsers. Um, it's a cool thing, and I'm starting to well basically implement this WebP uh, plugin for all my websites, and I'm, I'm seeing already like uh, the the server stress is getting less. So the server has only smaller images. Uh, to serve to about 30% of all visitors, uh, less bandwidth is being needed. But also the server needs to, to read in less images from the, the disk. So that's a good thing. The bad thing is actually that you still need to implement the CWebP image. Um, and that's one of these lineage tricks. So how to do that? Well, first you go to the Google WebP page. Uh, there you can download a various tool, a tool sets of Google to implement uh, WebP. But what you have to do is download the source of C WebP. There's a binary available, and a binary available for 32 bits or 64 bit system. 
uh, you might try to uh, you might try to just copy that binary into your Linux operating system um, and see if it works. And most likely it doesn't. So what you have to do then is actually, well, forget about the binary, take the source. And if I say a thing like configure make, make install, uh, are you familiar with that? No. It's like a standard way within Linux to take the source code written in, uh, I have no clue, but C++ or C, uh, take the source code, uh, configure it, and then compile it, and then install it on your system. It takes a bit of time, you have to have uh, this, this confidence of using Linux, but once you do it, it's, it's installed. And once it is, is installed, basically you can install in any Joomla website, any Magenta website you have, you can install this extension, and well, you're about done. So it's a very cool tool, and it's very um, new still, but it's uh, a lot of things to gain, basically. Your bandwidth is getting less, and actually I, I like to implement WebP on all the development sites I have, basically because when I have a site with Joomla or a site with Magento, and I'm visiting that website daily for about 100 times, um, my download times, personal, my personal download times are getting less simply by implementing WebP. And well, that's why I started to write this plugin because I personally got better out of it. So. Um, okay, so that's about images. There's various compression techniques um, and there's this new thing called WebP. So let's see what's happening with um, CSS and JavaScript. With um, CSS and JavaScript, the story is probably familiar. Um, there's all these different uh, minimization techniques, compressor uh, techniques. Uh, what they try to do is basically remove white spaces, remove comments, um, reduce all the unnecessary code uh, from the CSS, and then, uh, well, by doing that, reducing the size. Um, compression techniques are all over. And actually, the, 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 the technique of compressing CSS code is almost always more or less the same. It's always replacing, like, if you have a string of eight characters, and that string of eight characters is used in CSS for uh, many times, you could replace that eight characters perhaps with only four characters and create some kind of alias. So the, 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 the first um, is, uh, is an alias for the second, and suddenly it's working. The bad thing is actually that CSS code is not really strict. That means if somebody, some web designer, makes a mistake while writing CSS code, and that CSS code is actually um, so bad that it might crash the browser, um, if all the CSS code is compressed into one single line, that one single line is not working because that only the, the tiny bit of code that is actually um, written in a bad way. So the best way to, to guarantee that CSS is always being compressed in the best way possible is to also guarantee the CSS is 100% uh, W3C compliant. So there's this uh, W3C CSS validator. If you upload your CSS to the validator and it's coming back to 100% compliant, you will not have any problem with compressing it. If it's not 100% compliant, well, you could either, either just um, try out one of these tools and see where it gets you, or try to fix all the CSS. And personally, I think it's much smarter to just starting to use one of these tools and see whether the CSS code is still working on your website. And well, if it is, good. Um, these tools are uh, from different uh, resources. I thought CSS compressor is from Google, UI compressor is from uh, Yahoo, that's why the, the, the Y is there. CSS Tiny, Agent, Min, Minify are these different uh, tools. Um, and this is still a talk about the Joomla web server. So instead of installing these tools locally, the next question would be, can we install them on a web server? Well, the answer is yes, because otherwise I wouldn't have put them there. But the next question is also, <coughs> how useful are these tools? Um, well, when compressing CSS code, we are assuming that all the CSS code is already present on the web server. And from the command line, from uh, the secure shell, you're just uh, uh, running one of these tools, and uh, well, uh, the end result is that you first had a non-compressed CSS, and now you have a CSS 
will be compressed. That's good. But it would be even smarter if we could do it automatically. So basically, every time when the browser is requesting CSS code, um, we can use one of these tools to um, compress it on the fly. And that's much better than using GZIP. It's much better than just using one of the uh, Joomla tools available. Um, these tools are really optimized by the best of the best, I mean, the guys of Google, the guys of Yahoo. Um, and the only downside is it's from the command line. So within Joomla, we need some way to call upon the command line, use these tools, and get the end result back into Joomla, and then well, do whatever what, what we want with it. Um, I've, I've tried a couple of things, and CSS Tidy returns the result very fast. So to use CSS Tidy on the fly, uh, that's good. But CSS Tidy is only uh, removing white space, it's only the, the simple tricks. And actually the simple tricks applied by CSS Tidy could also be written in PHP. So if you look at the Joomla tools available, various kinds of plugins, they are also capable of removing white spaces. So if you're looking for a Joomla solution, actually CSS Tidy is not that well, they're not, not that uh, benefit. Um, CZ compressor and UI compressor are much better tools. The downside is you have to wait for a long time before they're done. So UI compressor, um, I, I fed it the, the entire CSS uh, of one website. So actually like uh, 20 CSS style sheets combined together, I put it into a UI compressor and it took me about five minutes before I got the end result. So doing that on fly while a visitor is waiting for the end result is probably not a good idea. So using these tools, it's, it's probably already that within Joomla, if you use a Joomla plugin written in PHP, um, the end result is already good enough. And well, to get again the, the extra 1% to have 100% quality, um, it's not, not that smart probably to do. You could do it, but then it's like a, a lot of work uh, to get on 1%. Yeah. Uh, the output of CSS time can we be uh, cached? Yeah, so that's an alternative, yeah. And so uh, what I would do now, uh, the first idea, yeah. is yeah. Uh, to, to make CSS tidy uh, run always mm -hmm. uh, and caching that. Yeah. And there's a cron job uh, once a day, a human compressor uh, run over yeah. to have a compressor version. Exactly, yeah. And that's, that's actually one of the, the best ways to deal with it. Okay. And you can even use an UI compressor because it's just a cron job and if, if, yeah. it's, if it's running for five minutes, that's okay. But for sure you don't want to do it uh, through a PHP call through Joomla, like a visitor's yeah, waiting for it. Yeah. No. <coughs> well, basically the same story applies to JavaScript as well. Um, JavaScript uh, can be compressed by removing white spaces, by using aliases, by shuffling around the code in a smart way and the end result is then that it's a lot less, less code. Um, there are these um, uh, tools available. Uh, Packer is actually a version which is also available online. So there's this website, Packer, which is allowing you to upload JavaScript and, well, get the compressed result saved to your uh, uh, files. But there's also a command line version, uh, which is uh, good to use. JSMin is another command line version. And again, both are giving a pretty good result and with, uh, within a reasonable amount of time. So that means you only have to wait seconds before a file of perhaps 200 KB is being compressed into, well, something really compressed. Um, closure Compiler and UI Compressor. Well, I, I used Closure Compiler on Mootools and I waited for about uh, 15 minutes. And I said, well, <laughs> this is not going to work. Um, UI compressor is also about five minutes waiting time, so these tools again uh, are, are capable of doing the job very well, but not within a reasonable uh, amount of uh, time. Okay, but, but Moodle is, is a one-time operation. Yeah, exactly. And actually the question is also, the, uh, what I did was I fed it the, the compressed version of Moodle's. Uh, okay. Uh, so actually it tries to, to see whether the compression already being done could be done better. And that's not making sense, perhaps. <laughs> but you can. But you can. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you have any experience? Uh, well, my, my approach always was to, to uh, combine yeah, the yeah. different uh, CSS 
and uh, JavaScript files, mm -hmm. request them with one request. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tag it with with uh, MP5. Uh -huh. uh, so I go and install it, but by that. Yeah. And if I have that in storage, I use that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, does that make sense if um, when you use UE Compressor for that once? Well, or actually, is it faster to to put all the things in and have one compressed thing instead of calculating? Yeah. Well, actually, if you, if you're talking about compression. Um, um, for, for me, like one of the basics is also merging. So merging is the process of having 10 files and then merging them into one file. And, but that's, that's not basically a, a benefit on, on the web server level, it's a benefit on the client level. Because the client does not have to download 10 different uh, files, but only one. Uh, so it, it's not about bandwidth yeah, basically, yeah, but it's yeah. about... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that merging is the first step. Yeah, it's a good okay. Yeah. Uh, so then I'm going to compress it yeah, yeah. Uh, in a way that's uh, feasible for, for the client. It's a great form. form. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then I have, uh, let's say, 20 merged versions. Mm -hmm. One with that package, which I only need on, on one page, but not on all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so I have 20 different compressed versions. Uh, of, of JavaScript files, yeah. and uh, the alternative is to, to, to make one, take them all together, oh, yeah, and yeah. make a compression. So does that make sense? Uh, for sure, because the, the, the cool thing about having one file, which is not changing for all the pages, is you can also ask the browser to cache it. And if you ask the browser to cache it, the browser only uses this text code uh, well, it's using the status code to ask the web server, um, is there any change? And if the web server is just responding, well, there's no change, um, there's no download needed. Yeah. So actually, that's, that's referring again to the browser caching abilities. <coughs> um, the downside is, of course, that, uh, for instance, if you have uh, 10 different pages, and all the different pages, they use 10 megabytes, then, then you would say, like, 10 megabytes times 10 pages is 100 megabytes. But it could be that one page is only visited like the most frequent, and the, 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 the tenth page is not. And actually, uh, combining all the CSS and JavaScript together uh, might download all these things you actually don't need. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's, still, it's still a problem. But I think uh, if we focus on, on um, well, having a generic solution and, and taking in the uh, amount of, of download time, it's still a good solution. But I think if you have two pages, one of them is visited and the other one is not, and the one who's, who's not being visited at all has uh, four times as much JavaScript, then your solution is probably much better to okay. have the, the separate files. So it's just a, a, a depending on, on the situation. Yeah, every situation is different. Uh, okay. yeah. but, that's like... but it, it's like uh, a lot of different factors are weighing in. Um, I'm talking about compression, but merging is also a, a thing to consider. Browser caching is also a thing to consider. Well, and we're talking about the web server, and I assume the web server itself is also capable of speed, enough, enough memory, uh, enough CPU, but that's a different presentation. So, let's um, continue with uh, CSS and JavaScript. Um, there are a couple of side techniques which also are uh, interesting. Um, so one, one of the presentations, or one of the uh, one of the subjects of uh, many presentations during Jay and Beyond is less. It's uh, included with Bootstrap, um, and the cool thing is actually that um, if you use less, you have a lot of different source files. But all these source files could be combined into uh, uh, an end result of one CSS file. So actually, the merging process is already part of the whole less technology. Well, <coughs> multi-flate is also one of these basic things. Um, if you have a web server, uh, you for sure you want to optimize that all the CSS, all the JavaScript, but well, um, HTML as well, and perhaps even images if, you, um, if you're keen enough. Uh, you want to compress them automatically as soon as they um, go out of the uh, web server to the client. Uh, for merging and the basic CSS uh, tricks, uh, there are a couple of plugins. One of them is written by myself, JCH uh, Optimizers. Another Rock G Zipper is, uh, I just found out one week ago that it's actually already outdated. There's this new, well, it's, it's so new that I can't remember it anymore, but there's a new Rocketeam plugin doing the basic thing of Rock G Zipper. 
but better. Um, the main problem with all these tools is basically they assume that uh, you as a web designer, you are in control of all the CSS um, and JavaScript code uh, being outputted. But if you're using a lot of different extensions, all these extensions might bring your own CSS code. And if one of these CSS files actually contains a bad, bad mistake, as soon as you uh, enable one of these plugins, the whole website is crashing. Well, it's not really crashing, but there's this huge file of CSS code. And somewhere in the middle, the CSS code is bad. So what is the browser doing? It's inter interpreting the whole CSS file until the error occurs. And it's dropping all statements after that. With JavaScript, it's a little bit better worse. Um, if one JavaScript error occurs, the whole JavaScript engine just stops parsing, but also stops working. So if one JavaScript error occurs in your compressed and uh, merged output, uh, game over. So basically, it means these tools are cool to implement them uh, on a website to get fast results. But once it is not working, um, the best thing to do is not to deinstall it and forget about the whole thing instead. Now then, the next thing to do is actually focus on what is causing the problem and how can I fix the problem. And that's a lot of work. Um, any questions so far? Well, well, yeah. <laughs> um, what we did so far was uh, discuss um, uh, dealing with images. Uh, compression techniques, etc. Um, also dealing with uh, CSS and JavaScript files. Uh, the last part of the presentation is basically um, whatever more I could find about while well, dealing with the web server and adding some cool stuff to it. Um, I'm also hoping to get some response from you, perhaps, that you have some extra tools you are using from the command line, which might be useful uh, to, uh, to others as well. Um, well, first let's focus on my stuff. Google, PageSpeed. <coughs> um, Google has this, uh, this website, PageSpeed. It has this, uh, has this um, uh, web-oriented, uh, uh, well, web-based feature of checking your website to see what is slowing down things. But it's also offering this Apache module, which is, well, it, it was before only working on Apache 2.2, but actually now it's also working on, on uh, Apache 2.0. It's not working on Apache 1.3. So when you try to implement this, you have to make sure that the Apache version is, uh, is working. Um, and what is it, what, 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 what it is doing? It's actually applying all the tricks that are um, also documented on the PageSpeed website for you as a designer to implement. So instead of, well, following all the steps and writing down all these different tools I just discussed, you could also just forget about the whole thing, install mod page speed, and you're done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> save us 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I had something to talk about. So. <laughs> uh, it's pretty cool. <coughs> it's doing all these uh, HTML optimization uh, things. Uh, it's trying to, again, like removing white spaces, um, uh, but also rewriting HTML tags which are not efficient. Um, if you have uh, certain meta tags in the top of your document which are outdated, it just removes them. If you have an, an HTML opening tag which is not closed, it closes it. And it's all fixing all these different things and then applying compression to it. So um, it's guaranteeing basically that your HTML and CSS and JavaScript is fixed, merged, compressed. And that's pretty cool. The bad thing is, you install it on the web server. And that means you enable it or you don't. And um, I try to enable it on uh, a shared hosting environment, well, my personal shared hosting environment, which has about uh, 100 uh, Joomla websites. And all these Joomla websites were instantly optimized. But once uh, you started to change a few CSS lines, you couldn't test it anymore because all the CSS files were. So what you do then is, well, log in as root, disable mod page speed, Fix the CSS. <laughs> yeah. um, there's, there's some room for improvement. Yeah, for sure. Uh, um, what, what you <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's rather uh, complicated to, um, to deal with this. Uh, when you implement Mods page speed, you have to be familiar with Apache configurations. So you have to be familiar with all these different statements you can put in virtual host uh, definitions. 
you have to know, well, you have to read the documentation also inside out to make sure you understand all the different options. Um, and what they do is actually, they have these um, features divided into filter groups. Um, and they have different kinds of filters. One of them, one, well, the, the core group is called <coughs> core filters. And it has HTML optimization and all these tricks. But image compression is rather done in uh, another really complete way. And if you want to have full image compression, basically meaning uh, all these uh, PNG tools I, I listed, uh, those tricks are applied, then you have to use the experimental core filter or the experimental filter set. Um, and there are a lot of different things which are really cool to deal with, but also really complicated. So actually applying it on um, a production environment is not uh, recommended by Google itself. Uh, well, if you have your own server, you don't care about production or testing or development. You just implement it and see what happens. But it's, uh, that, that. So it's, it's really cool material, but it's Google doing the do job for you. And if Google is doing the job for you, you don't really understand what's happening. So that's why I recommend dive into all the other slides, because then you really understand what Google tries to accomplish as well. And then, uh, once you start looking at uh, page speed, then you could enable certain filters, see what happens, and go from there. Um, almost last but not least, uh, security tools. Basically all my talk was about, um, uh, about performance optimization, but there are some uh, security things uh, as well. Uh, probably all of you have heard before of uh, Nessus. Nessus is this client server based uh, thing where you install the server no, the client. Well, you would simply install either the client or the server on the Linux, and then you use your own tool to connect to it. Uh, so, from a Windows environment, you can connect to your server. Perhaps, if you have multiple servers, you can connect to all of them at once and do all these uh, all these uh, security scans to check, like the, the Linux uh, kernel level, the Apache level, uh, and there are add-ons as well. I'm not sure if there's uh, Joomla-specific add-ons but they could be written. Um, so Nessus is cool. Uh, Maldit and uh, RK Hunter, who's familiar with those? Um, those are pretty hardcore tools, um, but they are vital almost for a Joomla environment, which is a bit out of your control. What I mean is if you have a Joomla server and there's only one website running on it and you're in charge of that website, basically when that website is getting hacked, probably you'll learn about it sooner or later. But if you have two or three or four Joomla websites running on that same server, um, well, there's other system administrators doing stuff you don't know about. And sooner or later, you, you want to check um, what is the integrity of my server. And Maldit uh, is a tool that stands for malware detection. And it allows you to run a kind of virus scanner, uh, well, malware scanner, on your Joomla website, and it's scanning all the different files within that site, and it's trying to see whether um, the so-called uh, root kit is, <coughs> root shell is available. So when a hacker is hacking a website, first there's an exploit. The exploit is basically this vulnerability, and the hacker is able to get in. But the next thing to do for the hacker is to gain control over the environment. And if you want to have control, it's nice to reset passwords, it's nice to have a file browser instead in place. And those tools are being uploaded to your website as one of the first steps to compromise the entire server. Maldit is um, scanning for those tools. Um, so that's, that's really a, a tool which is worth to install and running um, regularly to see, like, well, has anything uh, dangerous popped up. Um, RK Hunter is a different thing. RK stands for Rootkit, and that's basically the last level of where a hacker wants to get. Um, if, you're, if you're dealing with um, a Linux server, there are all these different users, but the root user is like the, the god within the system. So if a hacker becomes god, he can do whatever he wants. And one of the best things you can do as god is to make him invisible. Pretend you're like you're not existing. Or it's the trick of the devil, but so on. Um, RK Hunter is basically is basically uh, allowing uh, or RK uh, RK stands for rootkits. A rootkit a rootkit is um, uh, providing the, the hacker with a tool to hide all the evidence of the hack 
ever having occurred. RK Hunter tries to detect rootkits like that. So if you run RK Hunter and the result is <coughs> there's nothing wrong with your system, then it's a good, a good, a good time to, to sigh and say like, well, hey, let's have a coffee. Um, if it's giving a result, then you have a serious problem with that. And I would just unplug the server and just <laughs> go from there, basically. Um, some other things, and this is like a bunch of things to, to go over, and this is uh, probably worth another uh, 45 minutes, which we don't have. Um, when tuning a web server, you can deal with uh, kernel parameters. <coughs> there are all these uh, different uh, configuration options within the kernel, and if you install Linux on uh, any kind of server, it's basically a general installation of Linux on a general kind of server. But if the server is, um, is, is aiming to be a, a fast web server, basically the kernel also needs to be optimized for that. And then you're dealing with TCP windows, timeouts, and it's a great, great bunch of parameters that could be uh, tuned. Well, to, to have speed, TMPFS, it's a memory file based uh, system. Uh, PHP accelerators could be installed. Uh, well, you could forget about the whole Apache thing and install a different web server altogether. Uh, there's MySQL optimization, uh, the list goes on. There are different tools also to, um, to hook your uh, site to uh, remote services. Uh, New Relic is offering performance analysis. PWIC is a replacement of Google Analytics, but then present on the server. So instead of running Google, uh, Google Analytics remotely, uh, you have your own Google Analytics installed locally on your own server right. without any remote connection being made. Yeah, and it's legal in Germany. So it's, uh, it's Google Analytics is not legal. Really? Yeah, okay. Because of the, the cookie legislation? No, because they are in Central America. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And Quebec uh, is legal. Yeah. And there, there are quite a, uh, quite a bunch of Joomla tools also available to implement PWIC easily into Joomla as well. But this is just like to, well, share like the whole universe of, of the web server. Uh, when you're dealing with, uh, with the Amazon S3, you could also uh, upload your backups to, uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, S3 uh, by using a Kiva backup, and etc. And I just skip one because it's basically one of the more complex uh, tools. Um, S, well, Speedy, yeah. Um, SPDY, well, it's just pronounced Speedy. It's also one of these projects of Google. Um, and Google just well assumed like well we have PNG we have JPEG we have all these image formats, but what if we change the image format to something else? Perhaps there's a lot to gain. Well, the same thing they did with HTTP. They basically said well HTTP is based on a client-server uh, connection, uh, but what if we replace it with something entirely new? Perhaps it's a lot faster. And currently, uh, not HTTP but SPDY is used speaking, is used um, in client server connections between uh, the Google Chrome browser and uh, well certain Google websites. So you're, you're visiting from within Chrome, you're visiting the regular Google search engine, but actually it's not HTTP being uh, used, even if it says HTTP semicolon slash slash in the address bar, but actually underneath there's this new protocol being used. And I mentioned here HTTP2. Um, HTTP2 is basically non-existent. Um, to become HTTP2, to make it really official, we need to write an RFC and have a lot of discussion about it. Um, but it might be that protocols like Speedy might be included. So if you're really trying to experiment with things, it's also worth experimenting with uh, Speedy. Um, probably only a couple of hands were uh, familiar with uh, Speedy before. Um, I've also experimented a few things to get Speedy working in Apache, but that's <coughs> hell, that's basically impossible. So Speedy is really that experimental that as uh, a normal system administrator, it's, it's completely useless. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, nice to mention it uh, anyway. Um, that's uh, the whole talk. Um, I discussed like a lot of different tools and well, the last few slides that were just to, to give you the impression that there's there's a lot more tools to uh, to learn from. Um, are there any questions so far? Well, so far it's it's basically the end of my presentation. Yeah. Back to the images. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about um, processing automatically the optimization of the images. Yeah. So I, I think I assume that um, 
uh, these tools are capable of uh, not. Mm, is it bad to do to optimize an image price? No, no, no. Handle it. No, basically, it's the same like a uh, zip file. Yeah. Uh, if you create a zip file, uh, you create it with a certain compression. Um, but once you zip a zip file, actually, the end result is not not really that bad. No, a zip file is a bad, bad example. <laughs> you create a zip file twice, you have a zip within a zip. But with an image, it's basically not doing anything anymore. Okay. It's just checking like um, we want to have this optimization being done. Is it already being done? Okay. Then we can run. Yeah. yeah. Question about, about the page feed. Yeah. Uh, in the within the NGFs, I, uh, I I check for other modules. Yeah. So parameters on it. Is that also possible with with the page feed? Yeah. Install it and set everything to none, not using it. And then per website, uh, call it upon uh, in the HTML file. Well. Yeah, um, the, the mod PageSpeed module has this documentation of all these options being set. But the problem is actually that about 95% of all these options cannot be set from within HD access. Okay. So you need to do that within the virtual host configuration. So that means really diving into the Apache configuration directory and doing it there. And that's not easy, basically. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, another one. Actually, means again. Yeah. Um, what is the license model for WebP? Sorry. The license, the um, you know, the PNG is a what standard. Yeah. I'm not that proposed, but JPEG is not. So I've, I've, I've read, I've read over it, um, and it's it's a license which is more or less like PNG. So okay. it's like more or less an open license. Okay. It's not open source, <coughs> but the tools like C WebP and all the libraries made available to implement WebP are open source, it's GPL. Um, but actually the, the image format itself, it should be released under this, um, well, yeah, it's, it's like an image license. And I don't know what kind of license it is, but it is open. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Next slide. It's also uh, rather important. <laughs> well, thank you for the time.